falling in love with Willow during the first snowfall of 14. Hating Willow on the day the snow disappeared in 24, 10 years, love melted like snow. When she asked me to marry her, I finally let her go. Roles reversed, extreme switch. Those cliched plots happened too suddenly. But now, everything about you no longer concerns me at all. At four in the morning, my phone rang like a thunderbolt by my pillow. I woke up abruptly, followed by a throbbing pain in my forehead. Suffering from insomnia, I had to rely on sleeping pills every night. I wanted to smash the phone to pieces, answer it or not. If I answer, I won't be able to sleep tonight. If I don't, she will probably be very angry, because at this hour, no one else would call me except her, Willow, the girl I loved for 10 years. The ringing became clearer, and the pain grew more intense. I stared blankly at the ceiling, feeling the rhythmic throbbing at my temples. Thinking of the word 10 years, I stopped hesitating. One hand covered my forehead while the other answered the phone. Can't you see my WeChat messages? On the other end, Willow's tone was cold with a hint of anger, as if I had done something wrong. Sorry, I was asleep. Well, go back to sleep then. Then she hung up the phone decisively, the headache eased a bit. I sat up, lit a cigarette, and checked her messages. There were only three, all very clear. Come pick me up. Then she sent an address. Where are you? A few simple words, colder than the winter wind in Beijing. I got dressed, went downstairs, and sat in the car with a cigarette in my mouth. It felt like plunging into an ice cellar. Beijing's winter is not gentle. To me, it was like a beast that would tear holes in your clothes. I drove to the destination, a hot pot restaurant. It seemed I couldn't park on the roadside. After hesitating for a moment, I turned on the hazard. Lights and went into the restaurant. Amidst the nose, I saw Willow Ann frown the next second. In such cold weather, she wore a mini skirt and a tank top, with a thin jacket draped to sigh, sitting between two men. Her arm around one of their necks, her face was flushed from drinking, her eyes were misty, and she was mingling with them. People at the next table frequently glanced over. I walked up and pulled Willow, let's go, unexpectedly. She shook me off and sat back down defiantly. Don't touch me. The three men looked at me with disdain and provocation, I couldn't be bothered to respond, I just wanted to get Willow home man then sleep, I know you're mad at me, sorry, it's my fault for not seeing your message in time, let's go, it's very late. I stepped forward to pull her again, and this time, one of the men moved. He slapped my hand away, hey, who the hell are you? Don't you dare touch her, watch your mouth, I glared at the man, but he seemed to want to provoke me further, turning. To talk to Willow, is this the guy you mentioned? Willow laughed, leaning forward and back. Yes, yes, he's George. I told you, no matter when I call him, he will definitely come. Oh, he Tilda is your little servant, but he's not very punctual. They all burst into laughter, and Willow clung to the man beside her, her expression ambiguous. So, did I win the bet? Sure. What reward do you want? Saying that, he put his hand on Willow's thigh, but she didn't react, leaning softly into the man's embrace. Seeing Willow like this, a trace of darkness flashed in my eyes, but I walked forward without hesitation, staring at the man's provocative eyes, and said word by word, take your hand off. The man sneered, squeezing harder, leaving red marks on Willow's fair thigh. Who the hell are you? And who are you to her? You have no right. I glanced at Willow again. Her eyes were bright, smiling. I understood what she meant, she was enjoying it, enjoying the feeling of being defended, also expecting, expecting the men. To fight for her like animals fighting over prey, she succeeded. In the next second, I grabbed the man's collar, and with all my strength, punched him, then slammed his head onto the table. His friends reacted, one kicking me, sending me crashing into a leftover hot pot on the next table. The boiling water scalded my back, but under the adrenaline, I felt no pain, kicking that dirty hand guy again. Willow had long covered her mouth in surprise and stepped aside. The boss also came to stop the fight, but there was no way I would back down in a brawl, just pick one and beat him up hard. It wasn't until the boss yelled about calling the police that I let go of the man's collar. He had already been beaten into a pig's head, his face swollen, 
I was not much better, although. My face wasn't hurt, my head was full of lumps, and my back was burning. But they wouldn't dare call the police, no one would benefit. I spat out a mouthful of blood and pulled Willow away. You bastard, you hit really hard, the man, though swollen like a pig, still sneered disgustingly. Behind me, let me tell you, no matter what you do for her, she will never like you. Understand, simp. The drive home was silent. Willow draped in my jacket, stared out the window, lost in thought. I glanced at her, wanting to say something, but the words caught in my throat. The atmosphere was awkward. I licked my split lip and turned on the radio. Welcome to FM19. Next up, we have a song recommendation for you. Turn it off. Willow didn't even look at me, apparently annoyed. But if that's the case, why did she ask me to pick her up? I won't, for once. I defied her wishes. Maybe it was the pent-up anger from the beating, or perhaps I felt mistreated. Willow didn't speak. Her tone suddenly softened. Oh. Maybe she realized how excessive she had been today. Don't take what they said today to heart. My friends like to joke around, but you shouldn't have. Been so impulsive. I chuckled bitterly, my face turning dark. But Willow still didn't look at me, as if she hadn't heard. Seeing her back, my thoughts drifted to a quiet afternoon ten years ago. She also used to gaze at the window like this. Finally, I sigh, got it. I didn't want to lose Willow, didn't want to lose the beautiful memories of her, even if they were from ten years ago. Once people get used to something, they panic and fear when they lose it. They want to hold on, tightly. I think that's how I am. I'm afraid of changing my current life, so today, no matter how excessive she was, I think I'll endure it. Even friends have conflicts, do you like me? Willow suddenly turned to look at me, smiling slightly. I, it felt like a giant hand was squeezing my heart. I looked at the road ahead, opened my mouth, but couldn't say anything. The speaker played Joel in size rewind, and we didn't speak again until I dropped her off at home. As she was getting out, I grabbed her. Ten years. Don't you understand? She smiled sweetly at me. It didn't take ten years. I knew from the first year. Then you. George, some things are better left unsaid. Are you afraid of losing me? I nodded dumbly. I'm also afraid of losing you, but if we stay friends, we'll never lose each other. She left, not even waving goodbye. She only left my jacket and a veiled rejection. I live in the same neighborhood as Willow, but her house was bought by her parents while I can. Only rent. My home is both my residence and my studio. After graduating from college, I started my own business, but it hasn't taken off yet. The money I make each month is barely enough for living expenses. After parking the car, I noticed a parking ticket on the window. Willow, sitting in the passenger seat, must have seen it, but she didn't tell me. It seems she really doesn't care about me. Even as a friend, she would have joked about the ticket, or the ad stuck on the window, the sky was already bright when I got home, and my back stung with pain, making me grimace. I lit a cigarette and searched only, e for how to treat a burn, my phone suddenly pinged with a WeChat message. Anna, are you awake? I hope I didn't disturb you, call me when you wake up. I called her right away, Anna, a senior who is a year older than me and my business partner. Currently, she and two other. Juniors are working with me in the studio. Senior, any instructions? Oh, you're actually awake. Let me guess. Did you go meet your secret crush last night? TSK, this woman is spot on. All right, enough teasing. It's about work. Monkey finished the concept design around four. Senior, you could have called me then. She sounded a bit aggrieved on the other end. I didn't want to wake you. What if you got mad at me? Your sleep is so poor. It's not like I've ever gotten mad at you. Just come over. Got it, boss Wong Tilda. When Anna arrived, she brought breakfast. You know me too well, senior. This pancake is delicious. I wolfed down the food, not caring about my image at all. TSK, it's just not spicy enough. Next time, make it extra spicy. Thanks, extra spicy. Don't you know you have a stomach problem? Anna rolled her eyes at me. Stop calling me senior. It sounds awful. Then what should I call you? You way, that feels too disrespectful. Anna punched me. I'm just your senior, 
not a stranger, is calling me by my name so weird, the punch landed right on my wound, making me wince. What's wrong with you? Don't you dare pretend. Anna carefully examined my face. Did you? Kit, into a fight, I turned my face away from her. Nothing. Let's talk about work. I noticed Anna looking at me with a strange expression, a mix of worrying and frustration. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just that you seem to be keeping a distance from me. Like you have a girlfriend or something. You're mistaken. Senior, I'm single. Oh. Halfway through discussing work, the pain in my back intensify, like a thousand needles piercing. My skin. I gritted my teeth, sweat beating on my forehead. Anna glanced at me and threw the tapers on the table, pouting at me. Why did you stop talking? I'm afraid you'll die. Just then, the doorbell rang. As I wondered who it could be, Anna already opened the door. It was the delivery guy. What did you order? Give me some. I cheekily leaned over. You're in so much pain, yet you still have the energy to joke. This is burnoyment. Burnoyment. You. I wondered how she knew. Anna seemed to guess my thoughts. When you bent over to look at the papers earlier, I saw a small burn mark on the back of your neck. Normally, that spot wouldn't get burned. What happened? And you didn't even notice. Now you're sweating all over. I guess. Such a small burn wouldn't cause you so much pain. She opened the ointment. So, take off your shirt. What? Take it off. The cool touch on my back finally brought some relief. Thank you, senior. I weakly expressed my gratitude. Anna didn't say anything. Just focused on applying the ointment. The next second, my phone rang. It was Willow. I was stunned for a moment, then answered. Where are you? At home. Willow's tone was still emotionless. I can't sleep. Let's go eat. There's a great sukiyaki place. Eat. How about later? I'm in a meeting. What do you mean? There was a hint of anger in her voice. Are you throwing a tantrum at me? I'm not. I tried to sound as gentle as possible. I'm in a meeting. It'll be over soon. You. Whatever. Go if you want. Acting all busy now. Forget it. The call ended abruptly and Anna finished applying the medicine. She stood up to pack the drawings, senior. Thank you. Let's continue talking. Didn't Willow ask you to go out? Anna put the drawings in her bag and slipped on her high heels. You'll be distracted. Go find her. She was about to leave but then stopped. George, Aina's voice trembled slightly. I don't want to see you compromising yourself for others. She turned her head, her eyes full of unspoken words. Even though she is the one you like, is it really love or just obsession? Anna closed the door and left, leaving me stunned. When did I start liking Willow? It seems I've forgotten. I just know I've liked her for a long time. Since the moment she moved into my heart, I felt jealous when I saw her with other men and felt lost when she ignored me. No matter what I did, the first person I thought of was her. In school, I secretly wrote her name in my textbooks. Dreaming of a beautiful future together, she seemed to have become my entire life. But is it love or obsession? I seem to have blurred the line. Why do people have obsessions? Probably because of unsatisfied desires and regrets buried deep in their hearts. What am I seeking through all my efforts for Willow? To have her or just to claim a title, it seems like neither. It's to give an explanation for all these years of feelings, I want a complete ending, a conclusion with Willow, as for what the ending is. It seems unimportant now, I still went to find Willow. When I opened the door to the private room, the smell of smoke and alcohol filled my nostrils, the lights were dim, and it was very noisy. Willow sat in the middle, surrounded by small wine glasses, seemingly playing some game. Yo, who is this? Willow glanced at me and then turned back to continue joking with them. Don't mind him. Let's continue. Several pairs of eyes scrutinized me as I walked to Willow. What are you doing here? To apologize to you. The guy sitting next to her started to jeer. Willow, you're such a queen, acting all high and mighty. Yeah, your little lover is here to apologize to you Tilda to apologize. Amid the laughter, Willow casually grabbed a glass and filled it with a mix of whiskey and beer. Drink this, and I'll forgive you. I didn't look at the glass, only at her heavily made up face. Two, you know why I came to apologize. I don't care why, 
Okay, even if you don't care, I want to tell you, do you remember the promise we made 10 years ago? The people around perked up. Again, wow. A promise, Willow, you have a 10-year promise with this guy. Shut up. I shouted, and the room fell silent, seeing my red eyes and clenched fists. They knew further teasing would lead to trouble. Willow looked at me angrily. Why are you showing me that face? Think you're all that now. I've always been capable. I just want to know if you remember what you said 10 years ago. Yeah, if we weren't in a relationship in 10 years, we'd try being together, right? Willow sneered, hugging the man next to her, her expression playful. So, did you take it? Seriously, disappointment flooded my heart. In this small, gaudy room, our 10 years seemed like a joke, making me feel ashamed. Did I let go? Maybe it was her nasty attitude, or maybe I was tired of. These years, the unexpected relief happened in an instant. Yes, I took it seriously. All the goat you did for me back then, I remembered it all, so I secretly vowed to always be good to you. No matter what our future would be, so what? I changed my mind. I don't want to continue like this, so I'm apologizing to you. After this drink, we'll have no more contact with a determined resolve. I downed the drink in one gulp, placing the glass heavily on the table. Willow looked at me, her contempt turning into anger. The next moment, she hugged the guy next to her. Kiss me, the man, like an eager puppy, held Willow's face and kissed her fiercely. The jeering was deafening. I found myself surprisingly calm. The scene that should have made me despair made me laugh, seeing their dirty act. I felt disgusted with my past self for doing so much for someone like this. I lit a cigarette and sneered, watching them separate, panting. Wonderful, just wonderful. Holding the cigarette, I searched my wallet, pulled out a photo of me and Willow, and set it on fire, throwing it on the ground. Goodbye. Oh no, never see you again. I turned and left, closing the door to the room, stepping outside. I suddenly realized it wasn't that cold anymore. Looking down at the road and the greenery, the snow had melted, leaving only faint traces of water. Is winter over? I muttered. The snow has finally melted. The alcohol kicked in, and I sat by the roadside quietly smoking. A pristine white CT5 pulled up in front of me. The window rolled down and Anna stuck her head out, smiling brightly. Hey, handsome, need a rye. I smiled back. How did you find me, senior? Big brother, this is the road to your house, just a street away. I was wondering which big idiot would sit by the roadside, smoking like an emo boy in this cold weather. So you saw me, the big idiot, hot. I patted my butt, stood up, opened the car door, and got into the passenger seat. Is it convenient? Master, you, of course, please fasten your seatbelt. Where to? Handsome, home, to pack my things. Anna was taken aback, leaning in to sniff me. Have you been drinking? Why are you packing? Where are you going? I broke up with Willow. My tone was so calm that Anna was incredulous all these years. I misjudged Dan loved the wrong person. I told her everything Willow had done, including kissing someone randomly today. Anna just listened quietly, driving, I've grown to hate her and this city. I think it's time for me to go home. I never got used to living in a big city, and the studio, what about us? You're just going to quit and run home, leaving a mess behind, bury your head in the sand when you encounter trouble. I scratched my head, senior, you're still here. I'll leave the studio to you, enough. Anna glared at me fiercely. George, listen to me. Wherever you go, I go. Wherever you go, the studio goes. I've got your back, so stop thinking about running away. The lease on the house ended this month, and I'd almost packed everything. I didn't have much stuff in Beijing. Most of the things in the rented house were from the studio, but Anna, a true Beijinger, threw her car at home, grabbed two huge suitcases, and followed me to the airport. I was dumbfounded when I saw her. You're really doing this. You think I was joking, Anna, panted. Can't you be a gentleman? Damn, this is heavy. I was silent for a moment. 
What is this, senior? You should stay in Beijing. I'll come visit you when I have time. Stop whining. Get over. Kiran, help me with the check-in. What are you looking at? Never seen this before. I looked at Anna, feeling a bit emotional. She looked so beautiful today, almost unrecognizable. We had always been polite yet distant to each other, and I had never really looked at her closely. Today, she wore a cream-colored coat and camel high heels, her slightly curled long hair cascading over her shoulders. Her tall, slender figure was dashing and elegant. Her eyes, both charming and cool, paired with her distinct features, gave her an aloof air. And her words were particularly bold today. Even on the plane, I was still in a daze. How did things get so strange between me and Anna? I've never been to your hometown. Anna gazed out the window at the clouds. I've lived in Beijing all my life and rarely been elsewhere. Don't overthink it. I'm just taking a trip to clear my mind. As for Monkey and Big Yellow, they will stay in Beijing. With the internet so advanced, no work. Problem can't be solved. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. After getting off the plane, I noticed several missed calls from an unknown number. I called back, and the person on the other end remained silent. Hello, who is this? I frowned. If you don't speak, I'll hang up. Anna glanced at me. Who is it? Hearing Anna's voice, the person on the other end finally spoke. You have a woman with you. Anger surged within me. What's it to you? Willow realized I had blocked all her contacts and eventually used someone else's phone to call me. George. Willow paused. You never used to talk to me like this. So what? So are you treating me this way because of that woman? My hand holding the phone trembled slightly. Disappointment and anger welling up inside. What exactly do you want to say? Are you sure you don't want to reconcile with me and instead be with that woman? To hell with you! I hung. Up and blocked the number. Willow disgusted me. I didn't realize one could start hating someone so quickly. All the affection and thoughts I had for her vanished, leaving only ugly memories I know longer wanted to recall. Anna stared at me in a daze. Was that Willow? Yes. I blocked her. Do you regret it? I grabbed Anna's suitcase. Regret? Not a bit. She's just a burden. I made the right decision to leave the past behind. I feel so relieved. Let's go home. It wasn't until I brought Anna to my doorstep that I realized. Tam, why did I bring a woman home? This isn't right. What kind of relationship do I have with Anna? It's purely revolutionary. Friendship. We weren't close enough to bring her home, right? This is so inappropriate. Standing at the courtyard gate, I turned to look at Anna. Anna blinked her big eyes at me. A uh, senior. What? I originally thought of getting a hotel for her but suddenly remembered. Damn. I live in a village. I face bombed. UH. Nothing. My house is a bit shabby. You might not be used to it. How? About? No knee. How could I not be used to it? My family used to live in the countryside too. Just as I was scratching my head, the gate opened. And my parents, ready for a walk, glanced at U.S., then looked at each other, quickly approached us, bypassed me, and grabbed Anna's hand. My parents beamed with Joe, as if they had struck gold, afraid Anna might run away. Are you George's girlfriend? So beautiful. We're so happy to have you here. Welcome. This kid, George, didn't even call ahead. We didn't prepare anything. Look, Anna didn't refute, just smiled sweetly. At them, handing over the gift she brought. Hello, Uncle and Auntie Tilda sorry to disturb you so. Late. I oh, don't say that. You're not disturbing at all. You're like family now, no need to bring anything. I stood there, speechless. The world mocks me while I stand alone. Thirteen I stepped forward, smiling awkwardly. Mom, Dad, Anna is not, ow. Anna stepped on my foot with her heel, not what. My parents glared at me, waiting for me to continue. She just came back with me to discuss some business matters, that's why we didn't notify you in advance, after my parents. Enthusiastic hospitality including offering to cook a late night snack, we finally awkwardly stood. In my room, I was speechless. Anna cleared her throat. Ow. Oh, about that, I understand. I understand. I pulled out a quilt from the cabinet. 
I'll sleep on the floor, Anna blushed and glanced at me. I meant, can you step out first? I need to take a shower and change into my pajamas. I immediately slipped out, heading to the living room to devour some fruits. Mom asked, tell us honestly, how did you find such a beautiful girlfriend? Honestly, I don't think you deserve her. What do you mean I don't deserve her? I'm handsome and talented, a true hero who travels the world. I definitely deserve her. Yeah, right. Dad looked at me disdainfully. You must have something on her. I was speechless. Just then, a message popped up on my phone. Fine, George, you're heartless. Since you did this, don't regret it. I'll never talk to you again. And you'd better not come begging me. She never messaged me this frequently before. What does she mean by this? I replied with a single word, scram, and blocked the number, entering the room. I still felt a bit awkward. Anna was drying her hair. Um, maybe I should sleep on the floor, Anna said, feeling a bit embarrassed. No need, senior, you're a guest, but why? Pretend to be my girlfriend, just wanted to make your parents happy. You've been single for so many years, of course, they're worried. Besides, it's no big deal for me to pretend. That's reasonable. Thanks, senior. I'll treat you to a meal tomorrow and give you the bed. Then I won't be polite. Anna lay down. And I turned off the light and lay down too. Are you asleep? Anna asked softly. No. I'm not. Can you tell me how you fell for Willow? Why bring her up? It's a mood killer. I'm just curious. All right then. I lay there, staring at the ceiling, as did Anna. Blinking. And waiting for me to speak. This is also Willow's hometown. We met in high school. Memories. Like shadows, always come with a layer of filter when you recall them. In high school, my family was poor. While others ate lunch in the cafeteria, I would eat near the abandoned washroom on the fourth floor with spicy sauce and pickles on bread. Always the same old combo. That's when I met Willow, though she was beautiful. She had a wild streak. She was swinging a branch swaggering upstairs and happened to pass by the west corner of the fourth floor where she saw me sneaking around like i was hiding from someone she approached me warily and asked what are you hiding you better hand it over i refused so she kept poking me with the branch i was only halfway through my meal and her actions made me furious i grabbed her stick and snapped it in half see see you wanted to see right i'm just eating my meal What's your problem? She looked at my lunchbox with disdain and said, You treat this as a treasure, hiding, to eat? You're the one with the problem. Then she changed her tone and threatened, Go ask around about me. Willow, everyone knows the fourth floor washroom is my turf. Since you're here, you have to share. That's the rule. She snatched my lunchbox, tore apart the bread, scooped out the pickles, and ran downstairs. I was speechless. Someone actually took my meal as protection money. I felt a bit sorry for her, thinking she must be really hungry. So, I shouted, Down the stairs, you can eat, but return the lunchbox when you're done. Before I finished my bread, she was back, panting, with my lunchbox. She said, If I take my little brother's protection fee, I have to make sure he eats. That's my role as the boss. She opened the lunchbox, which was now filled with egg fried rice. This scene flashed first in my memory, like the prologue of a story. Then, all those high school memories with Willow came flooding back, like fragments, leaving behind snapshots of her smiling face the girl who gave me white rabbit candies. Between classes, the girl who bought a new bike as an excuse to get a ride when my bike broke, the girl who talked about university and future dreams with me by the roadside. But there was one image, one smile that was different. Bullying, a topic I couldn't avoid in high school. It wasn't originally related to me, but one day, I wrote about it in an essay. I detailed what I saw in the bathroom, the dirty paper being rubbed on the victim's head. After the teacher read my essay, she called me to the office. I saw the bully being scolded by someone else. She pretended to talk to me about other things, but quietly asked if the person in my essay was the bully. I nodded, cautiously, I thought nothing would happen, but after class, I was cornered on the playground, I 
continued. That day, after they beat me, fracturing my leg, and were about to drag me to the death room to do the same, Willow peered. Still the wild her, swinging the branch, she said. My little brother is under my protection. If anyone touches him, I have to step in. That's the rule. I stared at the dark ceiling, the blurry memory refusing to clear up, but I tried to recreate the scene as best as I could. She was just a girl. The branch was snapped again, and she was dragged into the bathroom in my place. Unlike the bow, she came out looking unscathed. Willow stood in front of me, smoothing her messy short hair, and said, I told you, you're under my protection. You must have thought they defeated me, right? I was pretending to be weak, ha, huh? got you. I knew she was just pretending to be tough. She always liked to act like the big boss in control. Anna asked, and then, then they were arrested and, I heard, even sent to jail. Willow told me, this while I was bedridden at home, recovering, Anna kept asking, anything else? She took care of me in school and was a pretty girl. After that incident, we were both ostracized, so she stuck to me every day. We played during breaks, walked home together, and ate by the washroom. Having a pretty, kind girl protect you during adolescence how could any guy not fall for her? So, I confessed, but she lightly rejected me, saying I only liked her because I was young, she said. If I still liked her in ten years, she would agree. Oh. Anna turned over. All right, enough. I'm sleepy. Okay, good night. Senior, good night, you jerk. Time flew by, and Anna settled into my home. I initially suggested renting a place for her, but before she could speak, my mom came charging in with a broom. Get out. If you want ZU to move out, we'll sever our mother-son relationship, father-son too. I don't have a dumb son. Like you. So, Anna and I started a countryside life. After work, I took her to the fields, telling her stories from my childhood. Anna was very comfortable here. In Beijing, she ate out or ordered takeout every day. Here, she enjoyed three clean, home-cooked meals daily, with a variety of new dishes. She even gained two pounds, leading to morning runs together. Life became interesting. Time with Anna was relaxing and pleasant, however, I couldn't admit one thing, I gradually developed feelings for Anna, I despised myself. There should be a gap between relationships. Even though I fell out of love with Willow quickly, it's too soon to develop feelings for Anna. I kept my distance, never crossing the line or expressing these feelings. It's a desecration of my feelings and unfair to Anna, so I kept it buried. But our peaceful days were disrupted by Willow's reappearance. When Nana and I returned from our morning run, we saw Willow getting out of her car. She took off her sunglasses and looked Anna up and down. George, you're replacing me with this woman. I laughed in anger, replace you. Seriously, do you even deserve to be replaced? Anna crossed her arms, not getting angry, and stood in front of me. So, you're Willow. What, am I famous? Willow stepped closer, not backing down. No, I'm just curious, if you didn't value your relationship with George, why come all the way here now? First, we've known each other for over 10 years. Who are you to interfere in our affairs? Second, this is my hometown. Can't I come back? Sorry, but George's business is my business. He doesn't want to see you, right? George. I nodded and pulled Anna closer. First, this is indeed your hometown. Whether you come back or not is none of my business, but this is my doorstep. Why are you hanging around here? Second, she's not an outsider. You can leave now. I started to walk away with Anna, but Willow called out. It's okay, George. I admit I went too far before. I understand you're angry now, but our ten years together can't be undone by a little hiccup, can it? I smiled get lost. Willow frowned. Are you serious? I'm very serious. And I'm done wasting words with you. Just. So you know, seeing you disgusts me. Willow lowered her eyes, looking very dejected. Can we talk alone? I don't have time. Before Willow could say more, I dragged Anna back home. Anna and I seemed to have a mutual understanding, as we didn't mention Willow's appearance at all. Until the evening, 
When I checked my phone and saw a message. It was from Willow. She had sent a photo, her legs dangling in the air. It was the local water tower. She had climbed up just near my house. The water tower was high enough to be fatal if one fell. If you don't come, I'll jump. I sneered and reply. Whether you jump or not is none of my business. Let's end this. George, before I could block her, she replied instantly. Let's clear things up, just you and me. Holding the phone, my brain was bombarded with memories and the pain she had caused. But, I hesitated. Finally, I reply, we really have nothing to talk about. Actually, I have my reasons. I didn't stay with you because I have cancer. If you don't come, I'll really jump. I don't have much time left anyway. I was dumbfounded. The evening breeze brought a slight chill as I donned a jacket and headed to the water tower. With a cigarette, Willow stood there, holding a branch, staring at the distant fields. George, you came. She turned, tears still wet in her eyes. I didn't want to look at her, focusing instead on my hand holding the cigarette. Nice ring. Did she give it to you? Willow stepped closer, looking at my hand. Ten years together, and she's more important than me. You're sick. I stepped back and took a deep drag. I like the ring, and I like her. That's the truth. I blew smoke into the air. Remember, you taught me to smoke, but then you quit. To be honest, I thought I liked you for these ten years. But it wasn't love. Willow choked up. Then what was it? Dependency. Comfort. In the status quo, not wanting change. Back then, you protected me, telling everyone I was your little brother. Your person. Touching me meant touching you. But thinking back, you were the big boss, and I wasn't the only little brother. You must have had many, some for long, some for short. I followed you for ten years, got used to obeying you, to your attitude, because I thought I was pursuing you, I did many things willingly, thinking it was deserved, I looked at her coldly. Maybe I liked you during those ten years, but you treated that affection like garbage. You said you knew I liked you in the first year we met, why didn't you reject me? That's what I'm most curious about, because, she paused for a long time before saying, because you were my last fallback. Last fallback, yes, George, you were my last fallback. She lifted her head, looking at me earnestly. Let's get married, George. I laughed out loud. Willow, you're insane. She hugged me. George, don't push me away. Willow, let go. I don't want things to get ugly. I won't. You used to love me the most. Why are you doing this? I'm even proposing. Just forgive. Emmy, I pushed her away, adjusting my clothes. You said you had cancer. I don't want to insult you. So let's keep some dignity. I'm leaving. Willow grabbed me, suddenly laughing. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't have cancer. I lie. Fooled you again. I sneered and shook her off. I expected as much. I turned to leave. But Willow clung to my coat. Have some decency. Last fall back. Stop saying disgusting things. Willow. Seeing you now makes me sick. What? You treated me like dirt before. And now you're playing this game. You only love yourself and care about your own interests. Kissing a guy you met five minutes ago in a bar. Then proposing to me, I looked at her and said. Clearly, I wish what you said was true. Cursing yourself like this. No one can save you. Willow, remember this. I don't like you anymore. Not anymore. Got it? I didn't give her another glance. And walked away only hearing the sound of the branch breaking behind me. Walking back home, I found Anna waiting at the intersection. She stood there under the moonlight, arms crossed, tilting her head and smiling at me. Dak already, young master. How was your meeting with the little lover? You know exactly who I went to meet. And how long have you been eavesdropping? Own up, Anna asked. Wait, how did you know? I stepped closer and stared at her. Confess, oh, you weren't home, and I was bored. Okay, so I went for a walk and happened to see you sneaking around. Who's sneaking around? I facepalm and looked seriously at Anna. You heard what she said, right? Put yourself in my shoes. What would you think? Well, to be blunt, I'd feel disgusted. I spread my hands, exactly. I was utterly disgusted.
So, don't think I had any lingering feelings for her. You. Anna burst out laughing. I was puzzled. What are you laughing at? You're explaining yourself to me. Could it be? Anna looked at me. With a sly smile. You've fallen from me? I panicked and waved my hands, but Anna quickly grabbed my flailing hands. I heard the whole thing. I think I heard someone say they liked me. I, 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 I'd. What's with this stammering? You said you liked the ring, and you liked her. Didn't I give you that ring? You, you, you. Cut it out, coward. Anna pulled my arm. Let's go home. A few months later. On the day Anna and I got married, Willow showed up. She was wearing loose clothes and slippers, with a hat on, looking swollen like a pregnant woman, quite different from before but still recognizable. Seeing her, I felt nothing, no disgust, no hatred, no lament about the ravages of time. It was like seeing a random person on the street or an old man passing by on the subway. This person had nothing to do with me. I wouldn't care or invest any emotion. You're here, come in. Willow looked stunned, then her eyes reddened. George, she wanted to say something, but I cut her off. Didn't the baby's father come with you? I asked politely. She looked down at herself, paused for a few seconds, and said with a choked voice, the baby's father doesn't know. I thought to myself, damn it, just say he's busy or something. Now it's awkward for everyone. Just don't make a scene at my wedding. I beg you. I laughed awkwardly. Ha ha ha. Please, take a seat. No, I just wanted to see you. She raised her hand as if to touch my face. And I stepped back, bumping into a waiter. Oh, sorry, sorry. I quickly apologized, thinking of an excuse to send her away. You're getting more handsome. And look at me now. I thought, who cares about your looks? This isn't a movie. I know you don't want to see me, I just wanted to apologize. A friend nearby saw what was happening, knowing my history with Willow, and rushed over with a mocking tone. Oh, who is this lady? He glanced at her and continued. How many months along, little girl or beau? I whispered, this is Willow, get her out of here. Don't let her cause trouble, ha ha ha, you chat, I'll be back. Dizzy day today, with that, I turned and walked away, heading straight for my wife. Soon after, the wedding began. After the ceremony, Anna and I started toasting the guests. My friend suddenly came over and whispered. Willow left, looked really sad. You h ha, I was busy toasting. I felt no ripples in my heart, as if a fly had been buzzing in the corner and then flew away. My happiness was right here, in front of me, and Willow, everything about her had nothing to do with me.